Hello and welcome to what's going to be quite a short film about TLC or thin layer chromatography. Now hopefully by now you've already got an idea of how chromatography works in general so what we're going to do is look at a few different kinds of chromatography and the first of those is called thin layer chromatography and hopefully by the end of this film you'll have some idea of what the mobile and stationary phases are in thin layer chromatography and what we mean by a solvent front and how we can calculate something called a retardation factor or RF using the distance that the solvent front travels. Okay, so first of all, let's look at what we mean by TLC. Okay, so it's not tender loving care in this context. It's thin layer chromatography. And once again, we've got a picture here of actually paper chromatography, which works in an almost identical way to TLC. So the reason that we've been looking at paper chromatography so much, I suppose, is mainly because you've probably done it already, but partly because it's very similar to TLC. Okay, so in thin layer chromatography, instead of using a filter paper, what you actually do is you get some kind of hard backing, like a like a, a plastic, a sheet of plastic, or a sheet of metal, or a sheet of glass. And what you do is you coat that sheet of glass in a very very thin layer of silica, which is basically silicon dioxide or aluminium oxide or something like that, that you can basically attach to this hard surface and it acts a little bit like a filter paper in that it will draw a solvent up it if you dip the thin layer into that solvent okay so that's what the thin layer is as we know the stationary phase is the phase that doesn't move so it's the thing that stays still and so that layer that we've just spoken about that is the stationary phase in TLC like we've also said this is very similar to paper chromatography so you dip your thin layer into the solvent and the solvent rises up and it takes part of the mixture with it so the solvent here is the mobile phase and now let's have a look at what we mean by the retardation factor or RF now what we can see here in these diagrams is that as well as dipping our thin layer into the solvent what we also do is put a lid onto it okay now that's I suppose fairly important because as the solvent travels up this thin layer what it wants to do is just evaporate off the layer but we want it to stay there and for it to keep moving okay so we put a lid on that means that inside this container there's a very high concentration of solvent vapors and they prevent more solvent from escaping and evaporating off this thin layer but gradually as time goes by as we've seen with paper chromatography the solvent moves up the thin layer and it takes parts of the mixture with it now what we can do by the time we have finished our chromatography is we can measure how far the solvent has traveled and this thing here so the 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 limit of where the solvent goes is called the solvent front and what we can measure is the distance traveled by the solvent from this start line okay so this distance one to four that is the distance traveled by the solvent so the dis difference between here and the solvent front is the distance traveled by the solvent we can also find the distance traveled by any one of the components of this mixture so for example the blue dots have traveled from one to two and we can then calculate this value RF by saying that it's going to be the distance traveled by the component distance traveled by any part of our mixture let's just say the mixture but I suppose really we're interested in a particular component of the mixture and we divide that by the distance traveled by the solvent divide those two things we find the retardation factor and if all conditions are kept the same then any particular substance in a mixture should always have the same retardation factor so if I use the same type of thin layer and the same kind of solvent then the RF value should be the same for a particular substance and we should be able to understand why that is in terms of intermolecular forces now because we know in general terms how chromatography works if a particular substance has certain intermolecular forces and can form certain intermolecular forces between it and a certain stationary phase and between it and a certain solvent then the amount of time it spends traveling will depend on how long it 
spends absor adsorbed and how long it spends, spends desorbed. And those two things shouldn't change if the conditions don't change. So in other words, you and me should be able to do the same kind of chromatography experiment, but it shouldn't matter how far we allow our solvent to travel because this ratio should always be the same for, for specific parts of our mixture. Okay, so hopefully you've got some idea, again, you don't need to know in a great deal of detail, but you've got some idea about how TLC chromatography works. In other words, just broad picture in your mind of how we set up one of these experiments. Okay, you know what you know that the mobile phase is the solvent that's moving up the thin layer and you know that the stationary phase is this thin layer of solid that's put onto this hard backing okay and you can count you would be able to calculate the retardation factor if someone told you how far the solvent had traveled and how far a particular part of the mixture had traveled and i suppose if you were asked to compare your retardation factor with retardation factors for known components then you'd be able to identify a component of your mixture anyway hopefully it all makes sense if you've got any questions or comments then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on youtube